Journey Minerva Providing Richmond and Inquiry The rapidly changing world Mrs Grant is a teacher at the senior school She is the head of history and politics As well as being a teacher she is also completing a PhD a PhD is a special project where you read lots of books and write a long essence about some things that you you are interested in. Mrs Grant's PhD is looking at the role of Polish soldiers during the Second World War. Where is Poland? Poland is a country in Central Eastern Europe. Um, its capital is Warsaw. What happened to you in the First World War and how did this affect Poland? So, a hundred years before the First World War, Poland had been split apart by its neighbours and so you had Poles living in three different countries. And when the First World War broke out, they had to actually fight for the armies of those countries. So you had Poles in Russia and the Russian army having to fight against Poles in the Austrian army and the German army. And then in 1918, when Germany is defeated and Austria is defeated and Russia collapses, an independent Poland grows out of the ashes um, and, and they rebuild their country. What happened to Poland from the First World War? Um, so after the First World War, Poland um, actually fights five more wars. Um, there's a big mess as all these new countries try to work out where their borders should be. So she's fighting for a few years, but she's also rebuilding her army. And then she's trying to make a country and reunite a country out of the three parts that had been split apart. Um, and she begins to build up her army and her navy um, and sort of make sure that everybody's got a good standard of education but obviously she's still quite a poor country because she'd been owned by other countries. How did the Polish soldiers come to fight on the side of British and France? Um, so in 1939 um, when it was clear that Adolf Hitler and Germany wanted to expand um, Britain and France offered a guarantee to Poland saying that they would come to her aid um, and declare war on Germany if Germany attacked her, which she did in September 1939. So it was as a result of this alliance um, that France and Poland and Britain end up um, fighting on the same side. Why do we refer to Poland as a she or a her? Um, traditionally, we refer to countries and ships as she's and hers. Um, and most people talk about the motherland, for example. Um, I think the only difference is Germany, where they talk about the fatherland. But traditionally, we think of them as she's. What roles did the Polish soldiers have on the war? The Polish soldiers were in the Air Force, the Navy were as well, as doing lots of, the, as doing lots of other jobs. So in September 1939, uh, Poland is defeated. Uh, some of her, her soldiers, her sailors, her, her airmen stay in Poland and, and fight against Germany and Russia but a lot of them manage to escape overseas. Um, they fight first in France and then when France is defeated they make their way to the UK. Um, so we see the Navy for example, they have three destroyers and some submarines and they make their way to the UK and they take part in patrols and convoys. Um, we see Polish airmen in Spitfires and Hurricanes um, in sort of 1940, 1941. So the Squadron 303 is really, really famous for scoring the most kills um, in the Battle of Britain um, in Hurricanes. And you also see the army that's rebuilt um, and they don't really see action until 1944 and just after D-Day um, when they liberate towns in France, in Belgium and Holland and eventually go and take the surrender of Germany. How far did the soldiers travel? So the, there's two main routes that the Poles take to actually reach the UK. So we talked about the soldiers that managed to escape in September, October 1939. 
and they make their way to Yugoslavia, to Romania, to Hungary, um, and then they make their way to France or to Northern Africa, and then they, they take ships through to the UK. But a much longer journey was taken um, by a much bigger group of Poles. So over a million Poles, including my, my granny and my granddad, um, were sent to um, Siberia by, by Russia, by Stalin's Russia. And they are imprisoned in labor camps. Um, and then in 1941, when Germany invades Russia, Stalin agrees to let the Poles go free. Um, but they are scattered across Russia in these camps. Um, and they eventually form up a Polish army, which then eventually moves to Tehran in Iran um, today. And then they reform and they train in the Middle East. And then they go to um, Palestine, uh, modern Israel. Then they go to um, Egypt. And then in 1944, um, they go over to Italy and they fight an Italian campaign. And they're there for a couple of years. And then at the end of the war, um, a lot of them make the decision to come back to the UK because it was very difficult for them to go back to Poland. Um, it was now under the control of Stalin, who was the guy who had sent them to Siberia in the first place. We heard that a bear helped out with the Polish soldiers. Is that really true? Um, there's this little bear cub called Wojtek, who the Polish soldiers meet um, when they're in Iran, um, and, and they buy him. And a little bit like them, he's, um, his mother's been killed um, and they're away from home. So they're both away from their families. So they adopt this bear cub and they feed him their rations. Um, and he sort of travels with them. And obviously he starts off as a little bear cub, but he gets a lot bigger. Um, and they actually make him a soldier. So he gets his own rations because they're running out of food. Um, and he drinks beer with them and he eats cigarettes. Um, and he's actually very useful when they go to Italy. Um, he actually helps carry crates of ammunition because being a bear, he's big and strong. Um, and then at the end of the war, um, when the Poles come back to the UK, he comes with them on, on a boat, so, um, living with some of the Poles in a camp in Scotland. Um, and then when the camps close and the, the Polish soldiers get jobs and move away, they need to find a new home for him. Um, so he ends up um, in Edinburgh Zoo and the Polish soldiers would go and meet him and chat to him in Polish. Um, and he lives there un until he dies in the 1960s. I wish we could have a bear to help us at school. What happened at the end of the war? So at the end of the war, the Poles have a big decision. Um, Poland was now under the control of Russia, but obviously a lot of their families were still there and it's the language they spoke and it's their homeland. Um, so about half of the quarter million Poles um, return to Poland. Um, and some of them reunite with their families and rebuild their lives. Some of them, because they spent time um, in, in the UK, were treated with a lot of suspicion. Some of them are treated really, really badly. Um, about half the Poles, though, stay in the UK um, and they, they build new lives like my grandparents. Um, but you have countries like Australia and Canada were also trying to encourage people to move there. So lots of Poles move to these countries. So today when there's um, Facebook groups set up for the descendants of these Poles, you've got people from California and Melbourne and South Africa and Argentina and London all sort of waving at each other. Um, and it is, it's really lovely that all these people rebuilt their lives and, and had families and, and made a, a success of it after all of that. What interested you most in doing this research? Um, so I grew up with stories. My, my grandfather was an artillery officer um, and he fought at Monte Cassino in Italy. Um, and my grandma, um, she was in Siberia as well. And then she was only 18 when the war broke out and she was deported with her family. And then she became a driver. Um, so she drove trucks full of sort of ammunition um, through the Middle East um, and we grew up with all these stories and the sort of the, the souvenirs and photographs that they'd taken from their journeys um, and the Poles made up the biggest group of immigrants after the Second World War but because they wanted to fit in, because they didn't want to be deported quite often they didn't really tell their story and sometimes the British weren't really listening to their story. Um, so it's a story that's amazing, this army that's created out of people that were starving in Siberian camps 
um, but the British didn't know about it. I just thought it was really important to begin to sort of tell that story. It's amazing, actually. Thank you to Mrs Grant for talking to us about the research. Do you have any published family? Do you have any interesting facts about your family history? Maybe one of your great-great-grandparents helped at the Second World War too. Check out the Bright Idea pages to find out more. Why did the superhero cross the road? To get to the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs>